Hi everyone, this is Ruli, Community Manager for Switchblade at Lucid Games. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. Usually we like to talk to you through our live streams and through our social media feeds, but we want to do a developer diary today. A sort of deeper dive into an upcoming vehicle, the Sundog, which you've already teased. I'm joined today by David Diebel, one of our gameplay designers on Switchblade. Hi! <laughs> Dave, thanks for joining us. No worries. Yeah. Um, busy, busy schedule as we push on to the next release. Um, so you want to give us a brief rundown of what the sort of job you do at Switchblade and Lucid and what your role is, what you do for the game? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm a designer, as uh, Ruby said, on Switchblade. And uh, my day-to-day -day role is uh, looking after all aspects of gameplay, um, gameplay balancing, that sort of thing. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a tough job. It's got to be done. Um, certainly with lots of vehicles in the game, it's, it's certainly a challenge, I imagine. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, mean, I, mean, I think that's a fair answer. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, but today we are here to talk, of course, specifically about the Sundog. Um, it's uh, if you'd like to give us a brief overview of the vehicle, what it's all about. So the Sundog is a mid-range fighter that excels at controlling a lane by keeping pressure on the enemy and not relinquishing its ground. Um, from a gameplay point of view, uh, we wanted the Sundog to be really distinct from the other fighters uh, and make map knowledge and coordination a focal point for its playstyle. Mm. Right. Um, is is there an example of another fighter, for example, like the Kamikaze? Now that's very direct and focused on what it's trying to do. It's trying to get in there, and the Sundog is much more passive. And you pick your opportunities. You stick with your mobs. Is that a fair assessment of the? I guess. I mean, I, mean, I wouldn't say it was it was passive in any way. Um, it's still a fighter, so it still needs to play aggressive. But I think with its abilities, um, you know, really you want to be attacking from a safe place. Uh, from a distance. So, whereas the Kamikaze, uh, the Flaming Blade and Thunder Pulse, they're designed to really get in close and be aggressive and, and, and really hound uh, the enemy team. Whereas I think the Sundog, you know, what we really wanted to get from it was, you know, this, this idea that it would plant a flag in the ground and say, hey, this is my territory mm -hmm. um, and, you know, back off. Mm -hmm. So, really, we wanted to be able to control lanes in that way with, um, you know, area. Uh, area attacks and uh, range attacks like that. So yeah, it, it certainly sounds very unique compared to the other offerings that we have right now in Switchblade. And I think um, the the abilities, especially which we'll get onto in a moment, uh, do sure. very much encapsulate almost literally the planting of flag, flag mentality. Yeah, I mean, we all, we all, I mean, we actually went pretty literal with that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, we, which was unintentional. Um, I think maybe like we mentioned in uh, one of the early design briefs that hey this is kind of like the feeling that we want to go for yeah. and it actually turns out that the uh, the nano banner which yeah. which we'll touch on in a little bit um is literally a flag that <laughs> yes. gets planted in the ground <laughs> like, this is mine yeah <laughs> so oh, it's, it, yeah it, it, it's, it's incredible though because uh, the community are, of course very excited for a new vehicle Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's exciting to be able to bring a, a deeper insight into things and and maybe some of the challenges that you faced um, yeah. in bringing this unlock to reality. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's exciting times. Okay, so we've booted up a game so we can uh, get a look at the Sundog and uh, start talking more about its abilities. And I think it makes sense to start with uh, the primary fire for the Sundog. Sure. So uh, the Sundog's basic attack is phase array, and this is a mid-range hit scan weapon. Um, so the cool thing about this is um, you'll notice that between levels on one and four, um, there are two barrels. Um, as the Sundog levels up, uh, the number of barrels on the phase array increases. So this really gives it a huge advantage to gain uh, critical hits. Mm -hmm. So, and it scales up to a maximum of five barrels. Which so, is, right, yeah. so at level 10, five barrels. So you, you, your, your chance to deal critical hits mm -hmm. is, is really high. So you really shred through uh, like low level mobs. Yeah. Um, you know, deployables. Yeah. Um, and again, it, it really um, it benefits um, Synergize as well with um, uh, the critical hit upgrade, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. passive, and the consumable shop item, the critical hit. Because uh, the number consumable. of ticks it's, it's applying is so right, high. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cause for, so for, for, for every barrel on there, um, there's a chance to deal a crit. So it's not per shot of the weapon, it's per hit of the barrel. So. Okay, no, that's really interesting. Okay, so secondary abilities then. So it's got two of them, an offensive and a defensive one. Yeah, so uh, the first of the Sundog's secondary abilities is Fusion Core. Uh, now, this is uh, a really cool um, ability. It's one of my favorite abilities in the game right now. So it's um, a projectile that um, fires in a direct line 
uh, ahead of you and it basically damages any enemies within its area of effect. Mm. Uh, structures as well. Yep. Structures as well. So mm -hmm. it's it's actually a really effective tool for um, uh, lane control, uh, clearing waves of mobs. Um, you know, you can kite enemies uh, into choke points and kind of unleash uh, this this attack on them. And it, it's really really good for for uh, uh, for dominating a lane and, mm -hmm. and holding. Yeah, map control. Basically. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's a bit more different to some of our other vehicles, who are mainly uh, single target DPS or things like that. But this is an opportunity to do much more wider bursts of damage. Right, mm -hmm. absolutely. Especially at range, if you aim it more accurately at range. Yeah. Um, okay, and so it's it's next ability, it's other secondary ability. Okay, so uh, this ability is uh, called Nano Banner, and this is kind of the uh, Sun Dogs kind of ace up its sleeve really um, so with this it can drive uh, a, a flag into the ground and it basically heals itself and all allies um, within a, an area around it now what you just saw there actually was uh, at the end of the ability is what we call the banner break um, and if you're still within the area effect when the uh, when the banner breaks um you'll receive some uh, burst healing so really this ability is is designed to kind of stake your claim uh to an area mm -hmm. um, so again really effective for uh, map control lane control um so it's never going to be as effective as um uh you know a, some of our dedicated, a, a dedicated support yeah. or a dedicated healer but it should be enough uh for you and your allies to to kind of sustain um, until help arrives, really. Yeah. So. I think that was the main concern when we first showed it off. It's like it's got a healing ability, but it's a fighter. How is that going to upset the balance, as it were? But, it, I, you know, for me, or from having played it, it feels just like it's going to top you off. It's going to keep you going. It's, right. it's not exactly. going to replace a healing hippo or a gravitron. Exactly, exactly. So, what, I mean, what it, what it means is that your, uh, your dedicated supports can be, you know, in, a, in another lane or, you know, helping out elsewhere on the map, and you're kind of okay for a little while yeah. just to kind of you know hold the fort if you like it helps you sustain but it's not going to replace full zero to zero to 100 percent healing absolutely yeah. yeah so we've taken a look at the uh primary fire and the secondary abilities of the sundog and it's time to look at the super and i quite really enjoy the sundog super as an astrophysicist so what to walk us through today <laughs> what, what have you got for us here? cool it's actually this is one of my favorite um abilities in the game as well so the sundog super is a uh, solar flare so this uh, channels a, a stream of solar energy in uh, a direct line um, and it basically applies like a butt ton of damage mm -hmm. uh, and also applies like a pushback force to the enemy yeah. as well. Okay, so it's got a tactical element of the knockback where you can push someone out of the way, but it's also a high damage dealer and you can cut through enemies. Right, right. And um, so I guess this all kind of feeds into the idea of, of being able to control um, the map and control areas um but also like yeah <laughs> as you can see like it, 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 it's it's very powerful but it, it has a short duration yeah. and you know it's quite a narrow beam as well so you need to be pretty precise with it um another cool thing with this is really synergizes well with um other CC abilities, so mm. crowd control abilities, yeah. like the uh, the vampire's mesmer flash. Mm. Uh, you know, if you can coordinate with your team and you know get a, um, a teammate to hit a bunch of enemies with a mesmer flash yeah. or get them caught in the uh, the gravitron singularity, yeah. you know, you can really really utilize this um, mm. very effectively. Yeah, um, it does apply a movement debuff when you're using the super, though you are rooted in place. It does. So it, yeah. so you do have a little bit of movement. You're not completely rooted in, mm. in, in place, but you're you are quite vulnerable yeah. Um, yeah. Um, while you're using it. So you need to, you don't want to be using it in isolation, basically. Yeah. Like you, yeah. need to have, you need to have the support of your team around you. I think one of the top tips that I ended up uh, developing was if you drop quickly drop the nano banner and then straight into a super afterwards, right. it gives you a bit of a VX over overload, but uh, you're healing yourself whilst you're... Right, right. And, and actually one thing I did forget to mention um, was you actually gain lifesteal as well. So while you're dealing oh, damage... Okay. Um, to an enemy, um, you're actually getting uh, a little bit of their health back, um, so that kind of helps you sustain yourself a yeah. little bit. So you're not you're not helpless, but you are vulnerable. Yeah, um, still while you're using it. So. I think it's certainly a unique 
uh, super ability for fighters because of mm-hmm. course the you know the the sidewinder is maybe its closest brethren in its mm-hmm. uh, deadly circus where it is just a massive like burst of damage directed right, at right, someone. Right, right, right. I think the, the I mean the, the the deadly circus. I mean he's got you know it's got homing, it's got yeah. a lot of range. Yeah. Whereas I think the Sundog, you need to put yourself in in a, in a vulnerable position. It doesn't yeah. have the range of something like deadly circus. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's, it's coming back to the whole narrative of this vehicle, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Whereby it's, it's going to reward sensible play that understands the strengths of the abilities. Right. Like the, the Nano Banner and the Fusion Core are all dependent or play very strongly towards mm-hmm. positioning. And uh, maybe it's something that our players haven't exactly thought of before when playing other vehicles or other fighters. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, it's going to be interesting to see uh, what the community make of it when they get, it gets introduced. Hopefully. Uh, this week, um, this podcast will accom- uh, um, accompany uh, the release of the vehicle. Uh, but we have more exciting vehicles in the pipeline. Which we do indeed. We yeah, won't be talking about yet. Be but very, very excited <laughs> yeah. to reveal those. So. I think, uh, and before you go, because I have been asking uh, all the devs when they hop on with me, uh, what is your favorite vehicle? Or is there a particular vehicle that you like, either from a dev point of view or a gameplay point of view? Um, so I, I'm actually a huge fan of the porcupine. Okay. Um, just because I'm typically like in 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 kind of like D and D games and ad- ad- adventure games, I'm kind of like kind of quite a, a sneaky kind of assassin yeah, the rogue, type yeah. character. Um, so yeah, that's kind of who I like to play, and <laughs> yeah. I, get, I think the porcupine kind of fulfills that. Uh, so okay, now that's that's really interesting. Well. Um... Dave, I want to thank you again for spending time with us today and talking through with Sundar. All right, thanks for having me. Yeah, um, um, hopefully we'll get more of these to you in the future, but hopefully you enjoyed this, and uh, we'll see you next time. Oh.